And while these five foolish virgins went out to get their own oil, to buy their own oil, the bridegroom came. But those who were ready, the five wise ones, they went in with the bridegroom, they went in with him to the wedding celebration. And then the door was shut. And afterwards, the other five virgins, they said, Lord, Lord, let us celebrate in this wedding celebration. Open up the door to us. And the Lord answered, he said, no. Assuredly, I say to you, I don't know you. Now, it's important to understand, he doesn't say, I never knew you, because he's talking to born-again people right here. He's saying, I don't know you in intimacy. I don't know you as a bridegroom. I don't know you as a bride. I only know you, I've only related to you in a distant way, because you've never drawn near me. That's what he's saying. Verse 13. Then Jesus gives a warning to all of his people. He says, watch therefore. Now to watch means to have a watchful spirit, which means in essence to develop a prayer life. Whenever the New Testament talks about being watchful, it's talking about several things. I don't want to go into that right now. But at the essence of it, it means develop a prayer life, develop an ongoing dialogue with your heart and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, therefore, verse 13, be watchful, for you don't know the day nor the hour of which the Son of Man is coming. Let's go back. Is that all ten of the people that Jesus is referring to are virgins. And spiritually, in the New Testament, every single born-again believer has been made, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it's a glorious verse, verse 2 and 3, every single believer, no matter how, how horrible your past has been, because of Jesus, you have been made a pure virgin in God's sight as a free gift the day you were born again. There is no spot or blemish whatsoever in your relationship with the Lord in terms of standing before Him. Jesus paid the price and opened the door for us. Now most of you are really clear about that fundamental point of the kingdom of God. That you stand clean. You're born again. It's a free gift. It's been given to you. So, but notice this. It's important for you to understand the parable all ten are virgins, and all ten have a lamp. Meaning, these are born-again leaders in ministry. They're born-again people, and they have a ministry, but he's particularly talking to leadership, although the principle applies to everyone. Because who's he talking to right now? He's talking to the twelve apostles and the next thing that's going to happen, he's going to go to the upper room, and then he's going to go to the cross. He's talking to the twelve apostles about leadership. He's talking about ministries that are born again. Now notice also in verse 1. It says that the ten virgins took their lamp, and all ten of them went out to meet the bridegroom. Meaning, these were not just kind of casual, I don't really care about what's happening in the kingdom of God type people. These were people who understood Jesus as a bridegroom. At one point in time, in their earlier walk in God, they went out to meet the bridegroom. Meaning, when the bridegroom conference was held, they were the first one to sign up. But here's the problem. Jesus is talking to the leaders of the bridegroom conferences. He's talking to the people who actually experienced the bridegroom God and taught others about it, and they actually had a lamp, and five of them lost their way over time. They actually had experience with Jesus as a bridegroom, but through the rigors of life, 
in the everyday routine mundaneness of life, they got disconnected from the reality that they were very connected to at one time earlier in their life. Now, nobody does this on purpose. Nobody says, you know, I've taught 10 bridegroom conferences. I think I'm going to backslide next year. I've never met anyone who does this on purpose. But I've been teaching on the bridegroom for some years now, and I've watched this. But it's nearly 20 years I've been teaching on the bridegroom, and I've watched this. Many people get on fire about this, and they have this new experience with the Lord, and they can't wait to tell everybody, and it's real, and it's alive, but two, three, four, five years later, they haven't continued to go deep, and they lose the oil in their life in God, and they lose connection with Jesus in an intimate way, even though they taught on it many times in small groups, or, or they told their friends, or read many books, or wrote books on it. The idea that you teach on it or sing on it is not a guarantee that you will stay steady and you will stay connected with it. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but I want us to have a sober, a sober reality according to this parable of Jesus. Now, in verse 1, we're going to look at another word. It's the word then. Now the question you most naturally ask, when is then? Because Jesus said, then the kingdom of God will be like virgins meeting the bridegroom. When is this going to happen? Hasn't the kingdom of God always been like ten virgins bringing their lamps to meet a bridegroom? Well, ideally, yes. From the first coming of Jesus for 2,000 years, Jesus has always been the bridegroom extending his hand to us on the basis of the cross to come into a bridal relationship with him. And remember, if you were not here last night, being the bride of Christ has, is not a reference to gender. Women are the sons of God just like men are the bride of Christ. Being the bride of Christ does not, I mean, speaks of a position of experiencing God's heart. Being a son of God is the position of experiencing God's power. We want to be sons of God and experience power, but we want to function as the bride of Christ and we want to experience his heart. As I said last night, we won't use his power right if we don't experience his heart in a right way. But if you read the context of Matthew 24 and 25, you will understand that it's one, it's one passage. It's only, I'm sad, that chapter 25, the, the chapter division broke the teaching up because when Jesus gave the teaching, it was Matthew 24 and 25, it was one afternoon, he gave the whole teaching in one setting. My point is this. You can't understand the context of Matthew 25, the passage we're looking at, if you don't a little bit understand the context of Matthew 24. Because right now, in verse 1, he's in the middle of a message. The message doesn't begin in verse 1. It begins in Matthew 24, verse 1. He's right in the middle of one of his teachings. So you have to look backwards. When is then. And many of you know, Matthew 24 is all about the generation of the second coming of Christ. What Jesus is saying, in the generation, when I return at the second coming, at that time, the Holy Spirit will, re will reveal a revelation of me as a bridegroom all across the world. And at that time, all of the ministries that are obeying the Spirit and listening to the Spirit, they will be encountering and proclaiming Jesus the bridegroom. I believe we're approaching that time right now.